people. It's so nice to see everyone. Hello, hello. This is a serious chat, you guys. Um, wait till you see what we've got in store for you tonight. Um, you guys know the rules. Please no like boring questions. I know who's here right now, so nobody here right now is gonna is could be boring if they tried. But um, quirky questions only, and I will send the chat to Alexis after the call. And the full disclosure, um, I'm mostly going to be interviewing writers that I haven't done audiobooks for. I've got a couple that I have done audiobooks for, but I do want these new writers' cup of joe calls to focus on the writer's process so that I think that we can better work with them if we understand how writers work. And also, I think we're all artists and we all suffer the same production issues, procrastination, fears, etc. And I think it'd be interesting to compare them. But Alexis has a story. One of the very first books I did um, on my own was um, because I'd worked through studios, but one of the first books I'd done on my own when I started recording from home was A Body to Die For. And it was the Joy Lansing story written by Alexis Hunter. And it broke my heart about 23 times and made me cry and made me remember my first early days in LA and all the potential and the dreams. And is just so poignant. It's it, it was such a moving, moving story. I, I was so lucky to have had a chance to narrate it. And I'd like to hear about 10-year-old Alexis. Oh, 10-year-old. Yes. <laughs> it might be you know, that was just a little while ago. 10-year-old. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. 10-year-old. Oh, I was a gawky kid, uh, tall. I'm, I was probably, I don't know how tall, probably over like five, two, five, three by then. Wow. Um, I was a tall kid. I was the tallest one in my class, I think. Where did you now, grow up? Oh, uh, well, I was a Navy brat. My dad was a uh, career Navy and we lived in Hawaii and the Philippines. He retired, I think, um, probably when I, I was around seven. And then we moved we moved to Kansas. I remember that from the book. Got yeah. It. Got it. Yeah. Kansas, right near Wichita, a uh, little town of 10,000 people. Uh, and it was, it was actually a great place to grow up, you know, uh, nice people, fun people. I, I, I really enjoyed it. I was, uh, uh, I was a happy kid. So it was great. Was Were you really living great. in the moment or did you have like big dreams about the future? And I, At that point, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just living point, in the yeah, moment. <laughs> I, no, I was just, you know, day to day, doop -de doop -de doop you know. <laughs> now, so for people, because I'm assuming that people watching this might not know the story and and I don't want to tell every single detail of the story because I want you to buy the book. Seriously, it's yeah. worth it. <laughs> but just for the roller coaster ride, that that book is but can you can you tell me about meeting joy and how that started oh, that, i mean it was actually um a true beauty and the beast as you as you remember um well i was i was living at the stu hollywood studio club at the time at uh farrah fawcett was there and uh you know a few others that actually worked a lot and um, I had a friend, uh, Alicia Brevard, and I got a call from her one day and said, I cannot wear this monkey suit one more day. Do you want the job? And I said, well, yeah, of course. You do. <laughs> and guys, for the I record, it was an actual monkey suit. <laughs> monkey suit. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was fake. Daniela, this was probably the, uh, the worst film ever made. I don't know if you ever saw it. It's hideous. It's called Bigfoot. And so uh, Alicia took me to meet the, the producer and the director, and they were very nice. And I didn't know anything about the film. All I knew was I was going to wear a monkey suit. And that's cool, because this is my big break, baby. I, I was going to be a superstar. I was going to be discovered like at Schwab's, right? <laughs> Only on a big foot. So <laughs> there I am. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, and they, 
this was so low, low budget that it was shot early in the morning, you know, that you were up at the crack. And so there I am in makeup and there, I mean, this monkey suit, it was fake fur and uh, hot. I was sweating. And, and it was massive. It was, I saw it. It was a massive. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh yeah. And there I am. And uh, my face and my hands were exposed. That was all. And so they were like spray painting black stuff on my hands and gluing this fake fur. Right. And I'm doing the same thing on my face. And, uh, you know, they had almost completed this fabulous transformation, you know, and suddenly op the door opens to the trailer. Right. And in walks Joy, I thought I was going to lose it. I'd always, I'd always had a, a, a little crush on her. When I was a kid, I would watch her on Bob Cummings or Love That Bob. And I would rush home from school to see her. And I just thought she was the most beautiful woman in the whole world. And there I am. And she walks in. I had no idea she was going to be in the film. I would probably would have been a wreck. Wow. Yeah. So, so there she is. And. And she sits right next to me and she'd already done her makeup. They were just doing a little bit of touch-ups and, and she, we just started talking and she was so unpretentious. So, uh, you know, like anybody, like you would never know she was a movie star or, or, or anything. She was just the sweetest, sweetest person in the world. And then we developed a friendship from that. So that was, that's how it started, but it was really beauty and the beast. Was there a weird, but was there, did it feel equal in the beginning between you two? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah she made it that way. You know, yeah. she wasn't like, I'm, I'm hot stuff and you're just a monkey. You know, you're just, yeah. you're nobody, you know, <laughs> you're, you're just a monkey. So, <laughs> so, so I mean, she, she was just really, really sweet and we just really hit it off. So, so that's how it began. When you were in your, like the whole time you knew Joy and you ended up spending so much time with her. And I mean, I remember the, the clubs. I felt like I was there, guys. I feel like I'm like, you know, hanging out with Frank Sinatra, like after oh, yeah. narrating this book. But, but was it, were you like at any point, like, I want to be famous. I want to do this. I, you know what I mean? Was there that feeling of or was it so encompassing the relationship that you weren't even caring about all that i didn't care <laughs> to be really honest with you daniela oh well <laughs> i was i you know i i won the prize i was yeah. <laughs> i was with the most wonderful person on on the planet so um i didn't i didn't care all i cared about was her being with her and how uh, many years was it all together i can't almost remember. four it was almost four it yeah, felt like we were, yeah, a we century. Were there, yeah we were there we were together 24 7 so it's yeah. as if we had a lifetime together i mean we were not separated so i mean we woke up together went to sleep together uh, all our days were together and you know how it is danielle when a lot of times when you're around people, you wonder about how are we going to, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to, you know, never happened. We always had something to talk about yeah. and it was so delightful. I mean, uh, the first night that we actually spent time together was after shooting. We were shooting till probably 11 o'clock at night and um, we went to Schwab's actually and we just sat there so and hollywood all night, long. all night yeah all <laughs> night long we just talked and talked and talked and that's when we really connected you know it was just it was um we co we connected on every level it was just amazing just blew my mind and you guys just, at the time because of the way things were she had to tell everyone you were her sister right Right. That's, that's what we came up with. I mean, Joy was straight. Yeah. Uh, and it just happened. It, it, you know, I knew I was gay, but, uh, and I wasn't about to, uh, 
make any indication that I was with her. I didn't want to blow it. I wanted to be her friend. Or I didn't want to lose whatever kind of connection I had with her. And it just progressed. And, and we're at her, right after Schwab's, we went over to her house. And no, it wasn't Schwab's. It was when I was a go-go dancer. Remember that when I was a go-go dancer? You got to tell me about go-go dance. You know, I have a secret wish that I, I actually bought an online class on how to be a go-go dancer. Oh, my like, God. I'll teach you. Yes, because the burlesque, when I was in burlesque, the girls that did the go-go dancing, I was so jealous. I've got to tell oh, you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But I think you have yeah. to have some rhythm. Well, yeah, I was, I was, <laughs> I was okay. I don't. <laughs> and, well, it all happened. Uh, one of the girls at uh, the studio club had the gig in a, a terrible place. It was a real dive uh, bar in Hollywood. It has and to be a dive. If you're going to be a real go-go dancer, it has it to be a, a dive. Or what dive. would be the point? <laughs> and yeah, right. It was, a, it was the dive. And I had her costume. It was a little bikini. And, uh, and sparkly and um and luckily we wore the same size and you know you wear wear the boots go-go go boots right and the bikini and uh, i mean it was so cool i mean i it was all men in the smoke-filled room of course you know it was just really gross like and, rockford files <laughs> yeah exactly and, and and i was on this platform and there were seats around it, it kind of like a piano bar type of feeling and yeah. i'm on it and they're playing this uh from the jukebox of course and <laughs> they're playing all this you know yeah. <laughs> wait uh-oh i thought maybe she was pausing for dramatic uh -oh. effect are you there <laughs> yeah that was so weird and in walks joy and uh i i had uh i had called her and told her I was going to be there and uh and and I thought you know, at that time she was having an affair with Sid Caesar that is what struck me when you said well Joy was straight and I didn't want to get what the the thing that shown the most in your book was that it was nothing to do with gay or straight no it was it just wasn't. two was, souls loved each other fell in love that fell in love. It yeah. was just, yeah. Uh, I I adored her. Um, she was the most wonderful human I've ever known. Um, I mean, I, I'm still in love with her, Daniela. I think I think very few people find that one that level of love in the world. Yeah, I was so lucky, but the bummer and the bummer, Danielle, I was it was when I was so young. So it's kind of been a little downhill, you know. <laughs> you know what well, I mean? no, but you see, I don't know because I don't know if that. I wonder if that kind of love is possible when you're not young, because you lose that like the joy innocence. and hope. And, and yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it's true. At this point in my life, I, I I don't know. You know, I don't know if I could feel that great passion love i think we've seen too much you get all, like i was thinking about that the other day because the other thing in your book is i remember this so vividly and i talk to people about it that live there now and i can see it's not the same this is probably why i haven't been back to la in a long time is i because i moved to la and i remember driving my sister's must classic Mustang convertible up Sunset Boulevard and the the smell of those white flowers oh, in yeah. the summer and the and you could smell hopes and dreams you could oh, like oh feel yeah. it in the air and yeah. when i did your book it i that was what i you could feel the air the when the sun went down in LA, and I know it was smog, right? But beautiful yeah. red sunsets, and literally the evening smelled like you know the twilight. You know that platter song, Twilight Time. Sure, That's sure. what LA is like. But I think because I was young, and everything was so vivid and beautiful, that I think if I went there now, oh, you'd be I'd, disappointed. Yeah, I think I wouldn't, and I think it's the same with love. I think it's good that you were young, because yeah. I, 
I was it's, so open and so yeah. so ready. Yeah, for that. and it's pure. It's it when you're young, pure. everything is pure because everything is like just what it is. You believe in yeah. everything. Oh no, you're you're so right, Danielle. It was it was a special time. It was a special time. And I think, I mean, I think it was fate. I mean, I mean, what are the odds of meeting someone that you always thought was just so wonderful and then falling in love with them and being with them? And yeah. And, yeah, and also just a great experience. Because you very generously and, and poignantly tell us what joy meant to you. But if you look at it from joy's side, if, and I'm not going to, I don't want to spoil the book, but if anyone, you know, wants to look it up and I'll have Alexis address it. Um, joy died very, very young. And which is why you wrote the book to help right. people understand and everything. And, and I don't think in this digital plastic surgery age, nobody is in, everyone understands it because literally we're still doing it to ourselves in other ways. And um, she, that's a, that's a very violent world Yeah, that, that someone, you know, for a person to deal with and you were an anchor to have somebody yeah. so pure loving you through all that. It, she it's, had it's a, like, sorry, go ahead. And now she, she had, well, that's part of the reason for, um, uh, well, an important reason for writing the book is because yeah. Joy, because of Hollywood, you're no yeah. good after 35 or 40, whatever. And Joy, when I met her, she was 39. And starting to panic, thinking, uh, you know, what am I going to do? I'm a, I mean, she was a sex symbol. She was just yeah. absolutely gorgeous. And the fear of not working. I mean, that was her whole life. She did that. She started when she was 14. Uh, she was in Easter Parade. And, uh, and uh, it, it was tough. So, and, and at that time, her competition was Monroe, Mansfield, Mamie Van Doren, uh, Diana yeah. Doors, all those gorgeous women. And so, you know, she felt, well, if she was going to compete with them, she had she to had be to sexier. She had to be, have a better body. And so, unfortunately, she had silicone injections in her breasts. And that, you know, that that was the beginning of the downfall. Um, but she achieved what she wanted. You know, I mean, she was, she was actually, Danielle, she was considered the Monroe of television. Uh, yeah. The others, Monroe and Mansfield and Mamie did a lot of, a lot more films than she did, but she was on TV almost every week. She did almost two, 200 TV shows. She was on everything. She was on Maverick, on, Sugarfoot, Sea they, Hunt. They all ended up, they all ended up just horribly, horribly. Every single one of them. It was, it's like right. Hollywood was like this like claw that got them and just like chewed them up. Yeah. The only one who's still surviving, and I know her, she's wonderful, is Mamie Van Doren. She's oh, okay. 92 now, 90 or. or wow. Or, she is great and oh my god whatever she's using or whatever it is she her i was i actually interviewed her because i was writing for uh, the local newspaper and i was like two feet away from her my god she looks her skin is like that of a 30 year old she does not i i don't know i mean i it's like whoa whatever it is mamie i want I want some of that stuff. And she's just amazing. She's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. At yes. 90. If you can find out what that is, please. Uh, yeah. I'll share. <laughs> I, I bought a miracle one over here from boots, but not sure if it's going to do that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. So, yeah. But okay. So, so this happened. You were together. You're still very young. I'm assuming, I mean, you must have been shattered 
I remember I oh. couldn't finish that chapter because I had to keep stopping to bawl my eyes out. Oh, my um, so, it, I mean, after that experience, how long did it take you to pull yourself together and, and see a light at the end of the tunnel? Well, I can tell you for probably the first two years after she died, I don't remember. I really don't. Um, I mean, I was lost. I mean, she was my world. She was everything to me. I was with her, and it was just like such emptiness. Um, and then I had to figure out what I was going to do with my life. Um, what was I going to, you know, how how was I going to live? How was I going to function? Um, and I finally, you know, I ended up, Joy's husband, and that's that's hard to explain, <laughs> but that he was her best friend uh, yeah she, uh, yeah good old stan he he was he was around all the time and after she was diagnosed he we got a place together and he helped you know because she couldn't work and i wasn't working so he you know he helped pay the rent and 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 he was so naive my god daniela he had no clue i mean no daniela we all lived together. I slept with her. He had his bedroom and he never got it until later, later after she died. He, you know, we were out to lunch because we stayed friends. And uh, he, he said to me, he says, uh, were you enjoying more than friends? <laughs> I go, oh my God. And I said, you, we only said, see the things we want to see. He probably just course, couldn't afford and, and to. We, and we didn't, there wasn't, uh, you know, we were not overly affectionate in front of him or, or you know. Yeah. There was no innuendo. Um, yeah. Uh, he thought of me more as a babysitter for her, you know, <laughs> or, or uh, pal, whatever. And, and I remember in the end, he couldn't deal with it. And, and no, he, he was probably, at least he knew that someone she loved was there when he could oh, handle the emotional yeah. Yeah. burden yeah yeah she had she had issues as you know she had issues she had issues with sleeping pills but that started when she was young when she was you know a studio system you yeah. know work them to just like judy garland work them to death give them speed and then give them uh sleeping pills to go to sleep and she she was strung out on sleeping pills i mean uh Nembutal, two and all, second all. I hate those. Wow. Things. Yeah. See, that's and that's hardcore stuff. Oh yeah, but that that was what it was. And uh Sid Caesar was on, I can't remember what it was. It, it was a different downer, but uh all the all those people were taking stuff, you know. It was it was legal. I mean, she had she had a a, a buddy who was a pharmacist who would uh, have uh, his buddy write her scripts you know just kept perpetuating it it was awful just awful and but the good news you know and i mean i tell about it in the book is um she finally realized how dangerous it was and how how it affected me because she would go on these i call them bummers um yeah. where I was, something would trigger her and i i i mean I didn't know. I mean, I was so young and naive and I didn't know it. I didn't know anything. And, and, and she would start drinking scotch and then start taking pills. And then she would be totally out of it for a few days and just, and I was just trying to keep her alive. So I hide her pills or I take, take the stuff out of the capsules and put other stuff in there just so that it, she wouldn't OD uh, I mean I knew enough that they could really hurt her yeah um, I, but I I wasn't trained I didn't know anything and at that and this was in 1969 and I mean there wasn't mental health uh, <laughs> awareness <laughs> like there is everyone now everyone wanting to not be triggered for things and like you know there's none of that in those days no 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 in those days you were kind of on your own and and i was just winging it you know just <laughs> just trying to help her and you know and i loved her my god so but so i wanted so two years 
the hard time. Do yeah. you remember the first step out of that? Where you started um, to come back to yourself? Um, well, uh, I moved back. To, uh, well, Stan opened up a restaurant with her money um, in, in Maui. He thought that would be a great place. He could write off his trips to Hawaii, you know, and have a really good write off. It, it was perfect. And so he uh, he had me go over there and I was the manager and I didn't know what the hell I was doing, of course. But and I tried and he hired these people. My God. Uh, and they were uh, they were stoned all the time and going and getting picking <laughs> mushrooms <laughs> out in the fields and they were so blasted and i told stan i said they're doing a lot of drugs here and i don't know anything and and so he got rid of them and then i was in charge and i didn't know what the hell i was doing so well it, it was it was a tough road but after that then i moved back to la and a friend of mine got me a job tending bar so that's created a whole new life for me that i think that that was the beginning of uh finding out who I was. And, and did you, did forward. you start thinking what, because joy was such a big part of your life. Did you, while you're tending bar and everything, did you start, when did you allow yourself to start dreaming about what you wanted to do with the rest of your life? Um, and what form did that come in? Um, I don't think I addressed that. <laughs> I was, you know, it was just day to day, doop de doop de doop. I was just tending bar, and I didn't have any great aspirations at that point. It was like uh, I I did start doing modeling again, uh, which was fun. Did you I want to be an me. actress again? Did you did you think um, to yourself a you... little bit? But I saw what it did to her. Yeah, I saw yeah. what it did to her, and. Uh, people were a little bit slimy you know and uh, it but the reason i ask is because you've done so much i mean the the, the thing is is you wrote the book and it's about joy and that's amazing because you know joy is amazing but you wrote this amazing book you oh. create this like stunning jewelry and I'm like a jewelry fanatic. Like oh, I'm oh. a hoarder at this point. I love that. I and didn't know that, Danielle. I oh, love boy, your jewelry. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like, believe me, it's like, it's like the bling is coming out soon on the Joe call. Oh, cool. <laughs> cool. 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 But, yeah, but mine's no, cheap love... stuff. Yours is like museum stuff. And, oh, you're so sweet. You're but, so sweet. But, but that's what I'm saying. You've done all these things and you just like kind of don't mention them but they're like life goals for most people so <laughs> do you do you never consider all these things like big oh, things I, I, oh i you know i i love my life um i've had a great time i've had a great run daniela uh i've done Are you so still having it oh yeah no i'm, <laughs> still, I'm rocking baby I'm, I'm just i'm just beginning actually yeah um, <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I've done so many different things. I've uh, had all these different. I tended bar, I managed bars, and then what else did I do? Oh, then I became a realtor. I, I moved to, to uh, Arizona, in Scottsdale. I became a realtor there. Is that and a then, fun job? I always I, wondered if that would be fun because you get to play uh, house. At that point, I hated it. And the really? Stress. Oh, the stress. Yeah, I, I yeah. Well, like what's what causes the stress like you don't know if the person's oh, gonna uh, buy you it get a call in the middle of the night uh i i can't i don't want to sell my house what do you mean you signed the contract you <laughs> you sold your house no i can't handle it blah 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 you know it's a it's a lot of egos and and selling someone's home or buying a home is a big life event for many many people so there's a lot of stress for them a lot of tension so you know that uh i don't want to sell it or uh and then i went i sold a house and i went to and and the house uh the guy who sold it was a landscape architect right so the house had gorgeous plants and it was really beautiful and 
I went there to meet the new buyer after it closed, right? Right. And, and when I get there, half of the plants were gone in the front yard. Right. And he so took I, the plants with him? He did. He did. And uh, and he, uh, uh, I called him and I said, you, you've got to uh, bring them back or the police will be notified because you can't do this. You have stolen the, you know. Because you sold it. Back. Yeah. yeah, you sold it. And those convey, they are part of the property. Did he, he bring them back? This. Yeah, he did. Oh, yeah, he did. Kim, but, says, I mean, the, Kim says the lowball bid you have to pass on to the owners as well. Was that hard? Oh, absolutely. Oh, you have to. Oh, you, yeah. you it's the law. You have to you have to present any offer that is is given to you you know for for the sale of the property you can't just pick and choose well i like this one or i like no you have to do that yeah i hadn't considered all those things i just can i just saw myself kind of rocking up to gorgeous houses and baking chocolate chip cookies so the place would smell <laughs> nice and then like greeting people and going and this is the den <laughs> <laughs> and it's just the kitchen as if they can't figure that out themselves You're right no yeah I, i'm actually going back into it you know i'm going to be doing some i'm studying again for the california test so i'm doing that and i'm making my jewelry which i that's my pet daniela that is my passion so how did that come about was the jewelry before the book or after the book uh, the jewelry was after I after the book Okay, so then, wait, so let's go to the book first. So what okay. made you think to write the book? Because I well, find that intimidating, writing a book, like staring. Did you have someone help you? Did you just sit there no. staring at a blank piece of paper? No, well, the thing is, at that point in my life, I had a lot of physical issues. And um, I was bedridden and in a wheelchair for almost four years because I had crap HMO insurance. Oh, no. And they kept saying, there's nothing wrong with you. You're fine. My hips were totally destroyed. They were oh, gone. Gosh. From all the, I, I tended bar for years and bending and twisting and lifting kegs and, and cases of beer. My hips were gone and they kept stalling and saying, you're okay. Well, so there I am um, lying in bed and bored and so i'm on the phone you know <laughs> you know bored 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 i didn't get on the <laughs> phone so. so i started calling everybody i knew you know and then i got in touch with joy's stepdaughter leslie who uh, i was friendly with i mean i didn't know her really well when joy and i were together because we didn't hang with many people but you know i met her a few times and she was a nurse practitioner and she was here in uh, Palm Springs area. And um, and we started uh, becoming friends, which was really nice. And and she, she kept saying to me, um, while you're lying in bed, because I had to wait, I was able to get um, Medicare, but I had to wait two years. Because I was oh too my young. Gosh. Yeah, there was a two year waiting list. So there I am stuck. And Leslie kept saying to me, while you're there doing nothing, you know, why don't you write a book? And I go, What? What am I gonna write a book about? I had no intention of writing a book, Daniela. And and she says, Well, why don't you write about joy? And I and I didn't what am I going to write? We had lunch, you know, <laughs> you know, I, she did I didn't think she knew anything. Right. So yeah. how am I, how am I going to broach that subject and just say, you know, do you understand? Blah, blah, blah. And, and she kept nagging me every single day. Why don't you start writing a book? Why don't you? And, and finally, I, I, I didn't care at this point. And I said, Leslie, do you understand my relationship with joy? Oh yes. Joy told me you guys were lovers. And I just about lost it. I had no idea. She knew. I didn't know that she knew. And so so I thought, well, okay. And I said, are you sure this is going to be okay with your family, everybody, blah, blah, blah. And she says, of course, it's not going to be a problem. And so I wrote it. And every, I would, yeah, and I would. Um, I've got Kim. Write, Kim's like, yay for Leslie. Hey, Everyone's like, yay, Leslie. Yeah, yeah. Leslie rocked. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and what I did because I had been calling everybody, is the phone was always ringing, right? And 
uh, I dedicated every night from eight at night till four in the morning because nobody called. You know, it was total quiet. So I would write 10 pages a night. And then every day I would send that to Leslie for her to read to, you know, if she approved of it, because I didn't want to upset anybody, you know, um, because I'm basically outing joy. You, you understand? So, so you wrote 10 pages a night. I, I find this fascinating. And yeah. did you know where to start or were you just like, right, just, I'll I tell the story from the beginning? Just chronologically, you know, because yeah. I had, I had actually, I had a journal and when I was with her, I would just write little notes, you know, and so that helped me mm. um, remember everything and would tri trigger memories. And, and I don't know about you, but if you know you're going to lose someone, you cling to every, every spoken word, every memory. And I had those tapes running in my head because I didn't want to lose any time with her. Yeah, I'm, I'm like my, my mother, my father had a stroke when we were young. So we spent our whole childhood, anytime he'd start to lose his temper and he's Italian. So oh my God. it happened a lot. She oh would no. say, don't make your father mad. You'll kill him. He's going to have another stroke. So I like oh that feeling of being hyper aware. Like I'm, oh that's God, like yeah. you grow up like that. So now I'm sure that like my bird or my husband you know, I tape them so I can get their voices just in case Aww. I'm like totally, which is not like the greatest thing, but it, wow. you know what I mean? That feeling of you have to hold on to it because at any, and the, you know, people say that people say you should embrace life. Everyone should be aware that death is coming soon. So you appreciate them. Well, it's not so much a good thing because no, it no, makes no. you crazy worrying. I was, I was, you know, I was obsessed. I mean, yeah. that, that, anytime I wasn't talking to someone, those tapes were running and I was yeah. just reliving. I was reliving the time that I had with her. Yeah. I didn't want to lose it. And the great thing about writing a book and putting it all down is I could let it go. Oh. And I could, I could move on because oh, it, yeah. I didn't lose it. I didn't lose it. And I want people to know how wonderful she was. I don't, I want her memory to survive. You how know, did the, she, how did it feel when you finished the book? When you, the last line, how did that feel? It, uh, it was cathartic. It was cathartic. It was, yeah. it, as you know, it was tough because the last line, you know, it was. Balled my eyes out. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> Even for the budgie. <laughs> so, Aww. so. So you finished the book and then right. when it came to selling it, was that scary? I, well, actually I was really lucky, Daniela. A friend of mine knew a, a book publisher who did, who does nothing but uh, entertainment related books. Okay. And, and, uh, and the guy, my friend told me to contact it, you know, to the publisher and I did. And he loved joy. And he yeah. says, I'll do it, you know, without even knowing what I'd written. I could have written just absolute garbage, but he absolutely, he <laughs> says, sure. Yeah, no, I'll publish it. So I had a publisher immediately. I mean, I didn't have to submit it to anyone. I didn't have to do anything. I mean, I've, I've been really, really fortunate in my life. Um, so you didn't have a ghostwriter. You wrote that yourself. No, I wrote it. I wrote you it. You see, that's it's and that comes from as narrator, and we love all our writers' books, but we see a lot of books and really good quality. It, it, we know. I think partly why I want to start the writers section of this show is because it's hard. Because I see it when like you can see them reaching for something, and every once in a while. You know, there's, but yours felt effortless. And so like, maybe you just have a born talent for it or well, I mean, did I, you study you know, it or? It was conversational. It was just like, I was telling you my story. Yeah. You know, it was just. But uh, the technical part of the technical part of it was, was perfect. And that's hard. That's uh, not easily I, done. I did have a good editor that helped guide me. Okay. You know, so, so that was great. That was great. So. so then the 
how did you start doing the jewelry? Oh, when did that come up? Well, well um, after because I had Kim my... wants to know if you designed the necklace you're wearing. Yes, I did. Check it out. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. Okay, I'll pull it out. Can you see it? Lots Seriously, of stuff going on. if you see Alexis's Facebook page, it's like enough to make you drool. She keeps posting these necklaces. I'm like, they're like museum pieces. Oh, I love it. I love it. It is my passion, Daniela. I I can't think of anything I would rather do than just to make jewelry. I when did it. you get the idea? How did it come up? Well, I, um, Leslie, sweet, wonderful Leslie. We uh, love said, Leslie. <laughs> yeah, Leslie, Leslie was a good lady. She said, uh, what are you doing in Arizona? <laughs> I was doing nothing. And, <laughs> And, and so she says, um, uh, come to California, I'll give you a job. So she had me take a course. I became a pharmacy tech. I took the course online, right? Because she had a pharmacy, a compounding pharmacy. And so I took the course and I was licensed and I came, I moved to California and do you not realize how like kind of ironic it is that the girl that was replacing pills in a bottle ended uh, yeah. up being a pharmacist? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so yeah exactly so uh, there I was doing doing what I'd done before kind of and um so I moved I'm everybody yeah yeah Kim every creative person needs a Leslie yeah. she she just kept me going and so I worked in her pharmacy and I became instead of more of a pharmacy tech because it was really not my thing um uh I was more of her personal assistant which I had done before. I had done in Arizona. I was a, a chauffeur. That's one of my other careers. I, oh, I that's changed cool. Careers. Yeah, there was an I old changed. movie, My Chauffeur, that I just, I always wanted to. Have you seen oh, that? Yeah. Oh my God. It's, have you seen My Chauffeur? No, I'll have to you check it out. You should get it. You'd love it. I love him. Yeah, no, I love that job. That was a great job. That looks I like drove, fun. I drove all the movie stars, all the politicians, and wow. had a, I had a great time with that one there's no real money in it but it's great fun i mean you have quality time with people that majority of people would kill to spend yeah. any time with these people that's a cool so, job that's a cool yeah job. it's a cool i mean i had julio iglesias singing to me in the front seat he was just sitting next to me singing to me get these jobs yeah. i was in la and the only weird jobs i got was like cleaning out people's fish tanks like i <laughs> <laughs> You somehow, yeah. everything you do is yeah. like star study. Cool, cool <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there, yeah, I'm driving. Uh, I, I I drove some of the coolest people. I was Dan Quayle's driver. I was, uh, uh, oh my God. Uh, just, I mean, you name them. I, I drove them. Really cool, cool, fun Very time. Cool. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. And then uh, then I moved to California and, and I worked for Leslie. And then around the corner from her pharmacy was this bead store. And I thought, God, that looks kind of interesting and fun because oh, I also was a painter. I was an artist. I, Joy started me on that. So um, I loved, I had shown in many places. I love painting. And then, um, and uh, so I went to the bead store and I checked it out and looked like fun. So I, I took a few classes and then that started it all. And then, you know, I started doing pretty traditional stuff, you know, just string and stuff. And then um, uh, I started branching out and, and just letting thing, letting it all hang out. And, uh, and then I just became more and more creative with the stuff. And I just love it. I love it. And I love designing things for people. You know, if, if I know the who this person is and what they like or whatever then I, I i will make something special for them i love doing it i did this really cool necklace for paula abdul i mean for the stage it, i mean it pops when the lights hit it it's really cool you're I'll like you're like you're like um there's a book barbara share wrote um refuse to choose and the people that i can't remember the name she used for the people that just like they do everything. It's not enough for them to do one thing. I call them Sagittarians. Every Sagittarius I've ever well, met is a done Sagittarian. That. Yeah. Yeah. Am I good? Am I good, guys? You are good, <laughs> baby. Yeah. No. I I want to do the thing is even as a kid. You asked me what you know my aspirations as a kid. 
there's so many things I want to do. Yeah. I'm, I would, I'm, I couldn't do just one thing in my life. I, I think, oh my God, that would be cool to be a chauffeur. Oh, okay. Oh, that would be, I was a massage therapist. I did that and I did very well with that. And then I was an esthetician. I, I you bet know, you I, never I, cleaned out fish tanks. <laughs> <laughs> I did for one woman. But, so yeah. the, along that point, Alan says, um, I know you've done so much and so well, but would you ever consider writing another book? Possibly. Possibly. Yeah, I'm, I might do it. I just have to figure out what to write about. You know, people have said, to, you know, some people have said to me, well, why don't we know about joy, but what happened to you? So yep. now, I mean, hi, it's been an interesting ride, I got to tell you. So, you can I write mean, about I mean, being a chauffeur and, I mean. Yeah, all these things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, I could do a chapter on every career and we still have a book. So And then that, get it yeah, narrated. Be, yeah, baby. Yeah, no, you're wonderful. I have to tell you, Daniela, you did such a great job with my book. Thank you very um, much. Well, it, it, take, it took a really talented actor to do it. I mean, because uh there's so emotion so much emotion in it and it's not it's not da 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 it's uh you know uh, uh you know it's it's a whole big deal and you did a great job thank, thank you, you very much i i mean i do have to say i think most narrators because because we work with what we're given and i know so many narrators it's like it can take something like that and you make it easy because the emotions are there do you know what I mean? So many of us, I mean, of all the narrators watching this call, how many of you have not cried in the booth and had to leave? Because, and it's always the end chapters when you're up against the deadline, <laughs> bawling your eyes out. <laughs> and, oh. um, somebody said, so Alan said, you have enough material from what you've told us about tonight. You have so much to offer the world. So. Oh, thank you, Alan. Thank you. Alan's a really great guy, by the way. I know Alan. He, well, he you know who Alan book. reminds me of? You know, um, I always bring this up because it's just in my head. You know, Mr. Rogers says, look for the sure. helpers. Yes. Alan's one of those people. Is It's like he he's like you in the way that he loves different things. He's probably going, mm -hmm. why are you outing me on the show? <laughs> yeah, right. But, but he's so enthusiastic, but he, he supports people. Like I see him oh, with yeah, people he loves. Guy. and Yeah. Like you did and for joy. Yeah. Yeah. And he loves my book. So that makes it really great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how I met him. I think through you, through your yeah. book. Yeah. I mean, the scary thing when, okay. Once you write the book and then it goes to Amazon, the, scariest thing in the world is waiting for the first review how people are going to react and luckily for me five stars i i mean it's do you it's still been, read them or I, did you just in the beginning or do you still no, read I them still, i still read them i you know i'm um i have over 250 reviews now and then i'm hoping for more if anybody's read the book please write a review you know, um, your trailer, I did your trailer and I did trailers for everyone. Your trailer got like 2,000 views and like, That's and I was great. like, oh, I really should have like, this was the one book I've got to say of all the books I've ever done that I kind of wished I'd done royalty share. <laughs> Oh yeah, well, yeah, well, well, we need to get it going again and then maybe yeah. we can do something with the next book. Well, because we it's, well, I think it's partly joy because people love her oh, and yeah. everything, but oh, it's, yeah, people, but there's yeah. a lot about her out there, but it's what you put, there was one guy did an interview and I, I, I was so pissed off. He kept going, allegedly, Joy's oh, secret I girlfriend. I was like, where do you get allegedly from? It's whoever no, you know, it, it, you know, this allegedly crap. Um, but the rest I mean, of it, he was like giving as a fact, and then he would turn around and stick allegedly in there. Oh yeah, well I think I think he felt. I mean, I did an interview with um, a reporter from Fox News, which you know isn't exactly, you know, I don't think they would really love me if they really knew the whole thing. But she was wonderful. <laughs> she, she was absolutely wonderful, and uh, she was wonderful. But she had to check around to make sure that I wasn't just uh, some wacko making up the story. 
I mean, geez, anybody reads the book, there's too much to, to pretend, you know, oh, please. But like, um, it's she, she, it would be impossible. If you'd read the book, it would literally be impossible. Yeah. And the thing is, nobody knows for sure if someone is your lover, unless they're in bed with you. You know, how do you know? I mean, you, you have to sort of trust that, you know, that someone's telling the truth. Well, but not only that, the, the fact that she is with you in photos so yeah. clearly, and why would she be with someone in photos? Obviously, at least friends, if nothing else, then yeah. why would that person turn around and like lie about the person that was their close yeah, exactly. friend? For, like, you know, it wasn't great, you know, it wasn't for my uh, glorification, you know. Um, yeah. No. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I found it because I wanted to show them a clip of Joy in the group to, so that people, you know, in case, right. so people knew the upcoming call. And and I got really annoyed with that, but I felt better when I read all the comments because, like, everyone was, like, below going, oh, give me a break. In those days in Hollywood, nobody, you couldn't, it was a different world, wasn't it? It was. Oh, absolutely. Oh, and it was illegal, Danielle. A lot of people, younger people, would not realize in 1969 it was illegal to have that kind of relationship uh there were only a few bars and i uh, in the bars you cannot you cannot touch you can't hold someone's hand you can't touch someone's shoulder i'm not talking sexually i'm talking just any kind of touching they could arrest you and they did uh, police would uh, would rouse the bars and they'd pick on the pretty girls and take them outside and say, hey, uh, you want to go to jail? You want to go in the back of the car? You know, uh, things were rough then. That was, 1969 was when Stonewall happened in New York. You know, mm -hmm. uh, people had had enough of, of being uh, beaten or abused or jailed for loving somebody. You know, um, thank God things are a little bit better. You know, well, I hope they improving. stay a little oh, well, bit better. Well, that's another issue there. Yeah. We, we can get on that subject. Yeah, no, no, no. I avoid no, politics no. at all costs. No, no, we're not going to do it. But I'm just, yeah. I'm just saying, um, it's, uh, you know, I'm just grateful that things have improved. And, you know, I hope my book is not banned somewhere, but it might be. Um, you know, it's a love story. It's not sexual at all, really. Yeah. I kept it, it could... pretty degraded. No. Yeah. No. It's it's a. Yeah. I just I'm speechless when it comes to that. It it just opens up a yeah. whole thing. Yeah. But I think. But the thing is, because two years ago, maybe four years ago, if we had had this conversation, I would have felt a little bit like, oh, thank God, I live when I live now. You know. Yeah. Back in the bad old days, like you know, think McCarthyism and all that, and and and. Yeah. Nobody can like accuse people of like ridiculous things and haul them up and and, sure. and it's <laughs> a different right. world again. But yeah. I guess it that's the way the world is. Things yeah, it's go ever away. changing. Everything's yeah. always changing. It never it's never stuck. Yeah. So and it's always a reaction. Sure. against what but um and then i think about joy and what happened to joy and the hollywood thing and the silicon thing and the but look at women now look at what women are doing now oh. i've like i see so many with the i'm and i'm not because people ask me why do you i said made a comment to someone when i started these calls oh, i gotta get my makeup on i'm gonna you know go on youtube i'm like why do you do that why do you care about that I love makeup. I have since I was oh, like three. Too. Makeup, jewelry. I wanted oh, to wear go-go yeah, -go boots. Oh, oh my God, yeah. Glamour's not dead, baby. You know, exactly. I right. love that. But Me too. The, sometimes now I see people where the beauty is turning into like fear. Like the, right. like the, they're stopping. They're not, not looking glamorous. They're, they're looking the same. Oh yeah, no that 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 is frightening, and that uh, I mean we started to talk about the silicone, and the thing is that's yeah. a major reason for running the book because all these women with the large butts, yeah, 
a lot of them have had silicone injections. Not in the, in, wait, wait, not their in the really? Yes, it's silicone. And Why? the thing, is, but they sit on that. Oh my god! And the thing, no, and the thing is, a lot of women are very, very ill, or some women have died from this because the silicone migrates. The silicone can cause terrible terrible things there's why a, are they still oh, allowed to use it then if it's they don't it's illegal honey it's it was never legal it's always been illegal and uh it, but women you know it's all you, you have to be this and you have to be that you're not good enough you're not pretty enough you don't have, you're not sexy enough your butt isn't big enough you know all this insane stuff and so th they will do things that they shouldn't do for their own health and there's a doctor in florida i can't remember if he's in miami or where that's all he does is remove silicone from people's bodies and, and i've seen some of the surgeries and it is the most grotesque this one woman had oh my god like a gallon of this crap in her butt and 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 and, and it it's hideous the the tissue can rot uh, but, it, but you it, talk it, about people undoing things. This is the weird thing. I would say that like, how do these people do it? You should look natural. But I've got to tell you, I had a, an, and it was an accident. It wasn't an accident, but I had like circles under my eyes, right? When I, I was like sure. younger and, and I met with this like director and um, it was when I was doing burlesque and everything. And he was like booking me for a show in Paris. And I thought, you know, I'm going to be shady laying yeah, in baby. Paris and everything. And so he, he said, oh, and you, you don't look bad for your age. You've got a good body for your age. What are you? And he like named an age that was 10 years older than I actually was. No wonder I have a good body for my age because I'm 10 years younger than you're saying I am. When, and yeah. He said, well, if you just get rid of those, you'll look much better. You won't. It's those give away your age. I'm just not giving away my age. You've got it wrong. But yeah. I went home and I looked in the mirror and I went to a really, really evidently expensive plastic surgeon on Harley Street. And I said, you know what? And it turned out I had thyroid eye disease, which I didn't oh, wow. know. You get puffy. So they yeah, only sure. did the bottom bit where they get rid of uh -huh. that, right? Right. I thought, wow, you know, perfect time of life after having, you know, very minor. I'm going to be glamorous and gorgeous beyond my years. And sure, they don't tell you the minute you mess with one part of your face, it dragged down my eyes. It changed the shape. I had olive shaped. Oh uh, I had God. like almond shaped eyes. It changed the shape of my eyes, which changed the look of my face. It pushed oh them in because you're getting rid of some of the natural fat, which right. changed the shape of my face. It, oh my God. Never the same again. And I will admit I spent a couple of months obsessively on the internet trying to figure out how to get it fixed. And that's oh. a road that I can see them go down. I get this filler, not me, but I see people. You get this filler, it doesn't look, my whole face looks different. I'll have to adjust this bit. I'll have oh, to move sure. this bit here, maybe move my ears behind my head. That might look better. <laughs> but yeah, I went through that going, I got to fix it. She's ruined my face. Oh my God, you know? that's and terrible. You never stop. When do you stop? You know, you can't. Once you start, once you go on that path, you can't stop. You've got to keep going. Yeah. You, yeah. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't mind a little. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's tempting, but I think that experience put me off it for life. You know? Yeah. Oh, and the time I got Botox and went on this show on back on the YouTube channel, yeah, when no. my eyebrows was like that. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh my God. You, you, you got, it doesn't matter who you go to. It could go bad. And, and I'm sure, but if they're getting silicone and it's not legal, they know that they're going to someone dodgy, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, like even Priscilla Presley went to a pumping party, that's what they call it. Some supposed doctor, whatever, was there injecting people. She had it around her mouth. She's had to have a bunch of surgeries to get rid of it because it migrates and it lumps. And I mean, it can be here one day and down here the next. Uh, it's not predictable. Yeah. And the body is always fighting it because it's foreign. 
And so your, your immune system is just going crazy all the time, just all the time, fight, fight, fight to, to get rid of it. It's terrible. Oh, stuff. We're, but so we're still don't. told by society that it's, pre I'm, I'm the first one searching for the new supplement that'll make me healthier and better and younger. And I keep conveniently ignoring the fact that if I just ate whole food and exercised occasionally and actually oh, went that. to bed before 3 a.m. Oh, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no, I'll buy 600 bottles of supplements. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, th well, that's too easy. Yeah. The other part, you know, yeah. the, the exercise and the eating right and, and, and that's the magic stuff, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. But, but it wouldn't have helped joy, would it? Because age comes no. on you, whether you, there was no aging gracefully in those days, was no, there? No, and the thing is, she she did not when when what the the bizarre thing is, she she always said, "I don't want to grow old, I don't want to." So sad. And she didn't. She never did. She but, died beautiful. That's yeah. it. People that are afraid of being old, that's the alternative. Right. That's it. Yeah. Well, you know, suck up. <laughs> yeah. Aging is not for wimps. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's, you captured something and, and I've got to thank you for that. And Alan will know this. There's a book that I love that I recently shared on Facebook that it's, it's just random memories and it, and it, it brings you back to the place and a body to die for did that for me. It brought me back to those heady first days of living in LA when everything in the world was possible. It's you wonderful. capture it. You capture it though. Oh, thank you. Thank Unbelievably. You. The Vegas, Vegas stories are really cool. Yes. So yeah. cool. And, yeah. and I mean, I, one thing Palm I, I Springs. Even, yeah. Uh, one thing I didn't put in it was, I mean, I met Tina Turner. I mean, it's so sad that she's gone, but she was so nice. It's just so nice when we were in Vegas. Yeah. Lovely. I think we, we all were. love Tina. I think job. everyone loves Tina. Great. I mean, she overcame so much and she yeah. became a superstar and she was a great lady, really great lady. Yeah. I want to do more because I used to do the Namioho Renge Kyo. When I first moved yeah. to LA, I was introduced to it and Tina did that. Yeah. And I always think, I want to start a practice. I need to like, I love, I love my favorite books are books that let you live in a different world for a little while sure. and escape yeah. and yours does. And I can't oh. wait. You've got to write another one because okay. you've got a way of I'll telling. Send, send you, uh, uh, you can be my new Leslie. I'll send you the pages every day. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so it's, you, can it's, you can practice the narration yeah yeah <laughs> i think it's i think it's it's that's what we want in a book we want to we want to escape sure. you know and and that's what a body to die for a forage and now i want to go and find the because you say there's a new chapter in it now yeah and, oh yeah. yeah uh new chapter and photos uh you have to see the photos actually Joy's brother's son's wife. Okay, I'm trying to figure out the yeah. Um, His brother's son's okay. Yeah, uh, he, she contacted me. She found me on Facebook, and she contacted me. I'd lost track of Larry. Larry was Joy's brother, and he was wonderful. And uh, his daughter-in-law uh, contacted me and said. Uh, Larry passed away and we were going through his, you know, some of his papers and stuff and found photos of you and Joy and I thought you might like them. Oh, oh my wow. God. Those, I remember those photos being taken by Joy's stepfather. We went to visit her mother and stepfather and he took photos of Joy and I, and those were the, we didn't have a lot of photos together. And, and I thought they were lost, you know, totally forever. And she was kind enough. Her name is Carrie Loveland, and she was kind enough to uh, to send me the photos. Uh, the, oh, actually, God. they were uh, slides, transparencies, and I I blew them up, and I had photo, you know, the photos made. And my God, if anyone ever questioned my relationship with Joy, uh, they wouldn't. The way she was, the way we looked at each other, um, no. Nah, I bet you'd photos. be proud of you, though. Do you ever think oh, of I that? Hope so. I hope because so. look at the life you've look at the life you've built after this. Like some people, I mean, 
I have my Kathy and Wuthering Heights moments where I'm going to open all the windows and that's just it. I can't deal with this anymore for like the littlest, stupidest things. And after everything you've gone through, then you've built this rich tapestry of a life and you've just kept pursuing things, one thing after another thing. And it, it's just, you've thrown yourself back into the joy of life after a loss that oh, extreme yeah, and profound. I, I love living. I love being alive. I'm waiting for more excitement and um, just every day it opens up a whole new world. And, you know, luckily I have this sort of a wide-eyed attitude uh, toward life. I just love it. I don't want to go anywhere. So just uh, I'm going to keep on trucking and just hoping for new wonderful adventures. But that's what saves us, I think. That's what, and I know people that are way younger than me that have like given up on that spark. And I know um, that that things happen, and I know physical things happen. I know life things happen, but I think that no matter what, you try to get that, keep that spark because that'll oh, keep us yeah. alive forever. Oh my God, yeah, and it keeps you young. Yeah, it keeps you with. Uh... Uh, joie de vivre it's just you know it's just a loving life yeah uh, smell the flowers love the people uh let people you know that you you know that you care about them you never never pass uh an opportunity you know you, yeah it, it's that energy you never and, know yeah you never know you never know when uh, that might be the last time you see someone uh yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't get me. Then I get all. Uh, but Al, um, Alan, speaking of somebody that does that so well, um, says there's so much magic in that book. So amazing. Love the Vegas stories with Elvis, James Brown, and also I love Peter Falk. Wonderful book. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's Thank quite you. something that Thank book. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. I can't wait to see the new pictures. Um, yeah. No, I'll send them to you today. Oh, yes, yeah. please. And yeah, I will can, send the link. I'll put the link in this YouTube. For people watching this YouTube video, I'll put the link to the book with the new chapter in there so you can oh, cool. easily find it. And it, it's just it, amazing. And when you do your next book, we shall have you on and we will discuss your I next book. I would love it. And I, want, I will want you to narrate. Absolutely. Uh, Thank you very much. And I swear I'm not peddling for jobs on this call, these calls, guys. I promise. No, but, no, no, no. but yeah. Thank you honor. very much. Thank you. And the Thank video so will be much. up in two weeks. And cool. it's been marvelous. I'm so happy that I, I feel like I've known you my whole life. It's so good to meet you. I know. Person, I Alexis. know. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, we need to keep in touch more and talk about yes. birdies. Yes. <laughs> okay. It was wonderful. Wonderful seeing you, Alexis. Everyone, thank you for joining. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Bye. everyone. Thank you. I hope you'll read the book. They will. Definitely will. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye.